In her latest column, Bridget Morton tries to assess what impact New Zealand First Leader Winston Peters might have if his party sits on the cross bench after the next election. Bridget joins me now. Well, let's first of all just explain what the cross bench is. Yeah. So the cross bench is generally what's called independent or minority parties, and they don't give guaranteed confidence and supply to the government, but say that basically they'll do things issue by issue. So you can still have a minority government, say a national government, that can't get enough votes on their own to get anything through Parliament. So every single time they put something forward, they have to go to the cross bench and ask them to support them on it. Now, you had some experience of this when you were working in Australia with the Liberal Party and a Liberal senator from the Senate there. Mm. I mean, explain what happened there. So there, they had quite the sort of um, increase in the number of crossbench uh, senators. And so when I was there, it was in 2013, Tony Abbott, you know, they'd got a huge majority in the House of Representatives, big mandate to government from the then like, you know, change of government from the Labour government. But in the Senate, the upper house, which also has to pass the bills, they had a number of senators across five different parties, including your sort of family first conservative to your um, motoring enthusiast, which was literally a guy that loved four wheel drive cars, to negotiate on every single bill. And that meant that everything just went round. And that meant also like every motion, every change or amendment to a bill had to go back to this group of senators. And you had to negotiate, of course, one against the other. Now, in a practical sense, that meant that bills took a long time to get through the Senate, that they could get to a point where everyone agreed and you'd sort of rush and you'd have sudden urgent sittings of the Senate. That meant all-nighters. You had senators running in and out of the chamber um, continuously trying to make sure that they were voting the right way. You had some of the independent senators not knowing which way they were meant to be voting on things. Somewhat chaos. And I don't think it led to good lawmaking either, nor necessarily good outcomes for the people that put those independent crossbenchers there because it was such a complex situation. And now in your column you're looking at this idea, well, what, say, Winston Peters in New Zealand first sits on the crossbench? I mean, surely that would be a nightmare scenario for National. Well, it could and it couldn't be. I mean, I think from um, it's not National's preferred way forward, but it may be easier than having National, sorry, having New Zealand First in Cabinet alongside them because that means at least that they can sort of publicly have the discussions about what they're supporting and what New Zealand First is perhaps holding up or pushing back against. It does mean that it kind of makes the sort of mandate to government a continuous sort of campaign or electioneering. It's a very sort of populist type approach where you're really reading what the rest of the electorate wants kind of today about which way the crossbench is going to vote. It would be make it very hard for government. And if I mean, thinking of, say, Christopher Luxon as Prime Minister, say, who hasn't got a lot of political experience, it would be a very difficult um, process to run, wouldn't it? Yeah, this is where you need someone really experienced in the rules of the House, and he has got that in, say, your Chris Bishops um, and your Nicola Willises. I think he has got the support around him to do that. But you're absolutely right that it basically means you spend a lot of time in the depths of the rules, on the in the chamber floor, actually sort of debating a whole lot of points, and that can slow things down. You know, a key example we've had over the last couple of years is we've had situations where they've needed to get COVID legislation, rightly or wrongly, through reasonably quickly. If you had to negotiate with the crossbench on that, it might make it much harder to get some of those emergency fixes happening. And, I mean, Winston Peters has uh, ruled out doing a deal with Labor, says that the Labor Party supposedly lied to him when he was last in government. Um, What's the prospect likely like that he would go onto the cross benches, or can we trust New Zealand First that they wouldn't deal with, do a deal with Labor if it suited their political? sort of circumstances? No, I don't think we can. I think um, Winston Peters has shown us that he's a savvy enough politician that he always keeps all options on the table. You know, he knows that you know this week you know, saying that he wouldn't go with Labour would get the headlines he needs and actually just really pushes the couple of key issues that he really wants to platform on, yeah, Pure Pure and the Three Waters. So we can also see Winston Peters previously have sort of thrown out this possibility of a crossbench and then has gone into government and taken you know, the so-called baubles of office so I think everything is possibly on the table. Maybe crossbench is more likely this time than other previous times, just because he's tried both sides and didn't really like either of them. But I don't think you can guarantee that'll be the outcome. Is he trying to attract, if you like, the soft national voters who otherwise would vote national, but if they think, oh, he's not going to go with Labour again, we can vote for him? 
I think there's definitely um, a reaction to having a majority government this time around. So if National was looking so far ahead in the polls, that's a key you know, ground for Peters to argue that he would be you know, a handbrake or an accountability on National and on that centre vote. I'm not sure whether that would sort of be the soft voters. It might be people who are particularly issue voters, something like Hia Pua Pua, for instance. I wouldn't see National going really big with that because it doesn't have the mainstream appeal, but there's definitely a group of people very concerned about that in the community, and that would be the sort of single issue that may get New Zealand first across the line. ACT is going very strong on that issue too, but you, you don't believe that they would be able to pick up as many of those people as perhaps New Zealand First could, or are concerned about co-governance and all of that? I think ACT has picked up some of those. You can see that by ACT's quite steady vote, you know, that has gone beyond the last election. But for many people, the libertarian policies of ACT means that they're not necessarily going to agree with anything. You know, ACT is of the small spending, you know, lower spending by government. Many people in the centre want to see increased spending in, say, education and health. Bridget Morton, thank you for your time.